Welcome to the Amphenol Broadband Solutions Cable 101 training series. In this video, we'll cover the clamp on ammeter. In this video training, we'll explain the clamp on ammeter applications, explain why there is electrical current present on a cable drop, show how to test for current on the cable drop with the clamp on ammeter, show how to troubleshoot modem and customer premise equipment issues with a clamp on ammeter, and discuss good and bad grounds. A clamp on ammeter has two useful applications in the cable TV world. One, it's a safety tool that technicians can use to determine if there's harmful electrical current on the cable drop from the home to the street and on the bond wire from the bonding block to the ground, usually the electrical service ground. Two, it can be used to determine if the bonding block is correctly bonded, thus bleeding off inductive voltage that can cause issues with the customer premise equipment in the home especially the modem. First, let's discuss the safety aspect of the device and why there is electrical current present on a properly bonded cable drop to the home. The ground and cable drop, the braid and foil, create a parallel circuit to the power company neutral. If the home still has the open three wire power feed from the street, called secondaries, the middle wire is the neutral and the two outer wires are the hot wires. Voltage between the two hot wires is 220 volts, while each hot wire to the neutral is 110 volts. In the case of the triplex secondaries, the two coated wires are the hot wires and the neutral is the bare wire. Voltages are the same as the open wire example. The current flow on each of the hot wires is determined by the current draw at any given moment in the house and changes as lights and appliances go on and off. In a perfect world, these two current amounts would be equal. Circuit panels are wired for these two phases to essentially balance out by alternating the circuit breakers from side to side by phase. In reality, older homes have had some electrical work done or large current draw devices have been installed later. When the current draw is not the same on the two phases, then an unbalanced current load is created between the two hot wires. This is normal and the unbalanced current load returns to its source at the street, which is the transformer. When the cable drop is properly bonded at the home, and the cable plant is bonded as required, then the parallel circuit between the cable drop ground and the power neutral is created. Parallel circuits share current load based on resistance, and the neutral has much less resistance, so it carries the majority of the current. The created parallel circuit includes the bond wire from the bonding block to the ground, as well as the braid and the foil in the drop in the field side of the coaxial wire, which is from the bonding block to the street. This is why there is usually a small amount of current on the cable drop, which is usually not perceptible to the technician without an ammeter. Normally, there is very low current on the drop. 0 0.001 amps to 1 amp is fairly normal. If the power neutral connection breaks or is intermittent, then the unbalanced current load will travel on the bond wire and the drop to get back to the street. Very often if the neutral is making intermittent connections, the customer lights have been flickering and changing in intensity. However, this is not usually apparent if they're using LED light bulbs. So how do you know if this has happened? If you have a clamp on ammeter, place it over the drop and measure the current flow. Since the current is flowing in one direction, the meter will measure it and show you how much there is. Let the meter measure for a minute or so to see if the current changes, which it will if the neutral is intermittent. If there is less than an amp of current, you can proceed and work on the drop using safety precautions. If there is more than an amp, consider halting all work on the drop and contact your supervisor and a local power company. If you do disconnect the drop, and the customer tells you their lights went out and possibly something plugged in just smoked, then do not try to reinstall a cable drop. The best case here would be to have the customer shut off their 110 circuit breakers, then the main circuit breakers. Have them call the power company immediately and report that there is a potential problem with the power neutral. Without using a NAM meter to measure the current on the drop, there is no way to tell how much there is. If there is a high current flow on the drop, the customer may start experiencing modem and set-top issues. When excessive current flows down the drop, 
there is resistance. This generates heat, and at first it doesn't manifest itself physically that the technician would notice. As the braid and the foil get hot, the dielectric melts, and the center conductor can move in the cable and short itself against the braid and the foil. As time goes on, the jacket will start to bubble and burn away. Ultimately, if nothing is done about the high current flow, the drop will heat up and finally break. Bonding blocks can melt and fires can start on the side of the house. So by testing current flow with a clamp on ammeter, a technician can determine if it's safe to work on the drop. If customers are experiencing modem issues or tiling on their TVs, then the bond at the house may be the cause. No bond or corroded bond connection with the high resistance could be the issue. Also, if the braid and foil is broken, which is the coaxial ground conductor, there is no bond because the parallel circuit does not exist. Squirrel or rodent shoes can do this. Testing the bond is technically done when testing for current on the drop. Place the ammeter over the cable or the bond wire and measure the current. If there is no current, then the probable cause is the bond connection or lack of it. Even if the bond looks correct, redo it to see if it was corroded or rusted. Experience has shown us that what has passed a QC test for appearance was not in fact working. If the current level is over 1 amp intermittently, tiling of TVs and forward air raid issues with modems can manifest themselves. At this point, follow your company's procedures for dealing with excessive current on the drop. If the intermittent high current draw is happening, there are issues other than an intermittent neutral which should be checked out. In some cases, homes with older secondaries of a smaller gauge wire can have current draw spikes when some appliances are used. If you are experiencing this, ask the customer what devices they are currently running in the home. Appliances with spin cycles that come on during their operation often draw more during this portion and can cause the problem. So how do you fix this scenario where appliances cause the problem? Amphenol Broadband Solutions manufactures isolators that can remove these surges from the cable drop, thus eliminating the issue. You could also have the customer see if the local utility would consider replacing the service drop with a larger gauge wire. If by repairing everything at the home there is still a problem, then the physical bond connections on the plant need to be tested. Again, if bonds are not done at both the residence and plant, then the bond isn't doing its job, and inductive voltage will build up over time, just like common path distortion. Disconnecting a drop with induction will discharge it for a period of time, but it will build back up. We've talked about bonds and the connection to the ground, but not really the ground itself. These can be bad as well. Poor installation practices and extended drought periods can make ground rods ineffective. Some examples of bad installation practices is a ground rod cut off because it hit a rock or ledge, or the ground rod is laid horizontally in a shallow trench. Drought conditions can cause bad grounds. If the water table drops below the ground rod, it can cause the ground to fail. Ground rods need to be in damp soil to provide the chemical interaction to actually be a ground. The ammeter will not test the ground rod. To do that, you need a mega unit that actually measures every ground that is tied together in the area by the power grid and the coaxial plant. The mega measures parallel circuits, so it does not measure a single ground rod. Readings over 25 ohms indicates a faulty or ineffective ground network. Let's review what we've covered in this training session on the clamp-on ammeter. We explained the clamp-on ammeter applications, explained why there is electrical current present on a cable drop, showed how to test for current on the cable drop with the clamp-on ammeter, showed how to troubleshoot modem and customer premise equipment issues with the clamp-on ammeter, and discussed good and bad grounds. Thank you for viewing this training on the clamp-on ammeter. For additional training topics, see our website at www.amphenolbroadband.com.